In this forecast, we're going to take a look at projectile motion. We're going to take a look at a formula used to model the vertical motion of an object. Suppose we're shooting a peace cannon at some unfriendly enemies. The flower shell leaves the cannon at a height of 4 feet and its initial velocity is 88 feet per second. Well, the first thing we're going to do is let's take a look at a graph of what this situation would look like. Since we're going to graph this situation, please label your axes. Our independent axis most often is going to be time. So label your independent axis as time in seconds. Now the height of our projectile is going to depend on how long it was in the air. So please label your dependent axes in height and feet. Please don't confuse the x-axis with distance. In this particular scenario, it's just going to be time, thus the vertical motion. Now let's think about what happens to our shell. Since it leaves the cannon at 4 feet, we're going to have a y-intercept at 0, 4. Now the shell gets shot out of the cannon. It's going to go up, and then at some point it's going to turn around and then come back down and eventually strike the ground. Now, what vertical force is acting on our flower shell? You guessed it, gravity. When the shell leaves the cannon, it's going 88 feet per second. And what happens to this is that it's going to go up in a vertical motion as well as in a horizontal motion. Since we're not worried about the horizontal motion, we're only worried about time here, we know that our um, shell is going up, but gravity is acting upon it. So eventually at some point it's going to slow down until eventually it stops going up. And then gravity keeps pulling on it. It's going to accelerate a little bit slower, and then the longer gravity is pulling on it, the faster it's going to go down toward the ground. And that gives us our parabolic shape. Now, why do we need to find a model for this situation? Well, a model is useful for finding important pieces of information. For example, we may want to find how high our flower shell went. Or, we may want to find how long our flower shell was in the air. Now to find the highest point on the graph, all we need to find is the vertex. find how long the shell is in the air, or to find how long the shell took to hit the ground, or in other words, a height of zero. We need to find the t-intercept. In this situation, we are looking at the vertical motion of our flower shell. If our flower shell follows this parabolic path, and we want to model this vertical motion problem, we are going to need to use this quadratic equation. Now to take a look at our equation in greater detail. h of t is going to be the function of height in terms of time, which is going to be equal to 1 half g times t squared. Well, g is the acceleration due to gravity, and in these particular problems, is going to be negative 32 feet per second squared because that's the acceleration of gravity on Earth. And unless there's some really bad event happening, that's going to remain the same. So 1 half times negative 32 feet per second squared is going to give us negative 16 times t squared. V naught times t, well, v naught is really the initial velocity, or in our particular case, the velocity of our flower shell coming out of the cannon. And so we get plus v naught t. And lastly, h naught is going to stand for our initial height, or the height of the flower shell as it left the cannon. So the equation that we're going to use to model our vertical motion projectile problems is h of t is equal to negative 16 t squared plus v naught times t plus h naught. Please take a moment 
and write down this equation. The nice thing about this equation is the only two things that you need in order to work with this quadratic equation are the initial velocity and the initial height. Now to answer question A. What is the function that models this situation? Well, I'm going to use my projectile motion equation and substitute my values in for V0 and for H0. Well, reading through my problem again, I know that my initial velocity, or my V0, is 88 feet per second. And I know my initial height, or my H0, is 4 feet. So now it's just a matter of substituting into my projectile motion equation to get my function. So, H of t is equal to negative 16 t squared. Well, my v naught or my initial velocity, is 88 feet per second. So I'm going to multiply that times t, leaving me with plus 88t. And I'm going to add my initial height, which in this case is 4 feet. So I'm going to add 4. So this is the function that models this particular situation. Pretty easy, huh? Now to answer our next question. What is the maximum height of our flower shell? Well, we now have an equation in standard form. And in order to find the maximum height, we must find the vertex. The vertex is where that maximum height can be found. So we must rewrite our equation that's in standard form into vertex form. And we must do that by completing the square. If you're unsure on how to complete the square, Please watch the Completing the Square Corncast. The first step in completing the square is to kick out the constant term. Step two in the Completing the Square process is to factor out an A term if necessary. Well, our A term in this particular equation is negative 16, so it is necessary. So when we factor out a negative 16 from negative 16t squared plus 88t, we get negative 16 times quantity t squared minus 5.5t. Now, factoring a negative 16 out of negative 16t squared is pretty easy. However, factoring a negative 16 from 88t is a little bit more difficult. The easiest way to accomplish that is to just merely divide the 88t by negative 16. And that will give you negative 5.5t. So now step three in our completing the square process is we take our negative 5.5, multiply it by one half, squaring that product of negative 2.75, giving us 7.5625. Now to add and subtract our 7.5625 to our equation, making sure to multiply that value by negative 16, because that's what we factored out originally. Now to factor our perfect square trinomial and to simplify this part of our equation. Giving us h of t is equal to negative 16 times quantity t minus 2.75 squared plus 125. Now it's pretty easy to get our vertex. By changing the sign of our negative 2.75, we get a positive 2.75. And our 125. So our vertex for our particular equation is 2.75, 125. So now that I've found my vertex, I can now answer my question. What is the maximum height of my flower shell? Well, the maximum height of my flower shell is 125 feet at 2.75 seconds. So to write it out, Now to answer our final question, how long was the flower shell in the air? 
will recall that we're trying to find the time from when the shell leaves the cannon, travel through the air, and for it to hit the ground, or to have a height of zero. So the first thing we must do to our equation is we must substitute zero in for our h of t. Using the fact that my height is zero, I must now find my t-intercept. Now I'm going to recall the fact that when I find the t-intercept, I'm also solving this equation for t. Now since this equation is a quadratic equation, I'm going to use the quadratic formula to find the value for t. Noticing that my quadratic equation is in standard form and it's equal to zero, I can now apply the quadratic formula to it. If you're unsure about the quadratic formula, please watch the Using Quadratic Formula Corncast. The first thing I like to do before I use the quadratic formula is identify my a, b, and c terms. Well, my a term is negative 16, my b term is a positive 88, and my c term is a positive 4. Substituting the a, b, and c term into my quadratic formula gives me the equation t equals negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2a. Now, instead of simplifying this um, by hand, I'm going to use technology. When using technology, I like to type everything that I'm simplifying into one line of my calculator. Please note that I use parentheses here to start because I wanted the calculator to evaluate everything in the numerator first. So I ended a parenthesis. And then also after the square root, I need to close a parenthesis. And I also need to close a parenthesis after I multiply by 4 here. So please make note of my use of parentheses here. And I also use parentheses uh, to evaluate the denominator. I want to make sure that I use my parentheses correctly so my calculator does not make any order of operations mistakes. Once I've typed in everything correctly, I now press enter. So the plus part of my evaluating my quadratic formula gives me negative 0 0.045 if I round to three decimal places. And now I'm going to show you something pretty cool about our calculator. If you look at the enter button and above it in blue letters, it says the word entry. If you press second enter, it retyped exactly what I typed in previously. So the cool thing about this is I don't need to retype all this in. I just merely need to change this addition to a subtraction for the minus part of my equation. So I'm going to scroll over there. And now I'm going to change that plus to a subtraction. Now I've done that. It's the exact same equation as before, except I have a minus instead of my plus. Now I can hit Enter again. And now with that one simple change right there, I'm able to get my other answer, 5.545, if I ran to three decimal places. So the solutions to my quadratic equation are t equals negative 0 0.045 or t equals 5.545. So now to answer the question, I have now found my other t-intercept. 5.545. Now if you notice, we got two answers. Well, the negative 0.045 seconds refers to the point behind where the cannon was fired. So that answer does not make sense. So we just omit it. Now to answer the question, how long was the flower shell in the air? Well, it was in the air 5.545 seconds. Well, I hope you enjoyed the uh, Peace Cannon projectile motion problem.